Welcome, Flyers fans. You're listening to Chris Mayer, Flyers Fan Mania 93 on YouTube. Okay, so obviously this is a little bit of a different video. Um, let's let's talk about something. You know, I, I was in a, a Twitter thread um, today, and I was just kind of having a conversation, and it sparked me. It really did. It sparked me to, to, to break this down and kind of talk about it, because I've been debating when I wanted to make this video and, you know, kind of trying to put all of my thoughts together into one. And there's obviously a lot of things that need to happen with the Flyers coming in the rest of this season and starting for the 2022-23 year. Um, there's a lot of questions that need to be asked. And there are a lot of things that people are kind of, I guess, uh, trying to figure out. Because as of right now, I'm going to pull up the Flyers here on cap friendly, um, on their salary cap. And F, for this season, they have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven unrestricted free agents. And three restricted free agents for this year. Going into 2022-23. Obviously, the main one being Claude Giroux. What happens there with G uh, at the age of 34? Um, you have Rasmus Ristolainen, Justin Braun, Keith Yandel, Kevin Cadon, Nick Sealer, and Martin Jones. Those are your unrestricted free agents. So let's let's break those those handful of guys down there. For uh, Yandel, Cadon, and Sealer, and Jones, um, I don't think any of those four guys will be staying. Um, and again, I'm breaking this down now. More for the fact of why I don't think this team should be rebuilding, and they should not take on a full rebuild. And I, I'm going, I'm going to explain that. So again, uh, Yandel, Connaught, and Sealer, and Jones. I don't think any of those guys are going to be here. Um, again, most of the guys were all one year, one year deals at a very low minimum. Um, Sealer has been iffy for the most part. Yandel has not been good. Sealer, again, as I said. Has really not been good at all, honestly. Um, Kenalton's had his moments where he hasn't looked great. Jones has been average, but again, a lot of those guys have kind of struggled. Now, as for Ristolainen, um, he's 27 years old. He's an unrestricted free agent. I think the Flyers should re-sign Risto. I do. Um, I don't know what his his uh, term and his money would be. I, I would believe, like to think... Um, he'd get a, a, a pretty good average size deal term wise as for the money. I don't know if he'd stay at the same rate. Um, I feel like his play, I think he's been, a, a, I think he's been really good. Honestly, I honestly think he's been the Flyers more consistent defenseman over the season. You know, if we're looking or uh, honestly, I should say since Elaine Vigneault got fired, since AV has been fired, I think Risto's been one of their most consistent defensemen. Obviously, Sanheim has put up the points. Certain guys have played better. Um, but I think Risto defensively overall has been probably their most consistent defenseman night in and night out, regardless of how the team has been playing. He provides the physical presence. You know, he does the, the, the little things right. He's, his breakouts have been better. He's had more consistency with Sanheim. So I think he's something to build on there. Now, obviously, the other thing is, is Claude Giroux. What happens there? Giroux, again, at 34, um... Could you trade him? Could you, you know, if the Flyers trade him, you're going to get a lot for him. You know, that that's a big name to get moved around the market. And um, personally, I don't see, I, I really just don't see it. You know, I, I, there's just nothing in my mind that makes me think Claude Jordan wants to stay here. I mean, with everything that has gone, um, the way that things have gone in recent years and really his whole career, because they wasted his career. I mean, the, 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 there is no if, ands, or buts about it, and regardless of the whole, you know, strip of the sea thing, I'm not even talking about that. That is just ridiculous at this point, and I'm done having that conversation. It's the fact that they wasted his, it was an, it's an arrow wasted of Flyers hockey with Claude Giroux on this team, because you could have built so much around him, and they failed to do that many, many times, and there's many reasons why you know, I, I, I can see him not staying here, but if he is going to, and again, I don't really see that happening. Um, I, I just don't, I don't see Drew staying here, whether it's him signing somewhere in free agency or the Flyers trading him, whatever it is, because both can happen. 
but I just do not see Drew staying here. So then what do you do, right? Basically, you you have a pretty big hole in your lineup. Um, who do you keep? Who do you let go? Obviously, they talk about who you let go. I think if, if the Flyers are going to band-aid this, which they've done for a handful of years now with everything, they've band-aided a lot of things. And when you go and you look at this, I think there's four guys that are untouchable for me. For, for me, at least. Um, you know, I, I think uh, Carter Hart is definitely one of them. Um, Ivan Provorov, Joel Farabee, and Sean Couturier. And honestly, I'll throw Ryan Ellis in the mix too. So five. Um, five in total. Those are my five guys right there. Because, and I know you probably think I'm crazy with Provorov, but just hear me out. If you at least give Provorov time, and again, he is only 25. You guys know me. I'm not a guy that likes to give up on guys um, when they're young or at least give them the chance, you know, and we've seen that with different guys, and I'm going I'm to get to that. Provorov, I think, obviously he needs a good partner to, to play well, and so does every other defenseman in the league. And I think when you are able to put him with a guy like Ryan Ellis – it can be very similar to what happened with Matt Niskin in 2019-20, how good, how stellar that pairing was for the Flyers, and just how overall consistent and solid was it that it was throughout the entire year. I think if you at least let Ryan Ellis get healthy and you go into next season, you keep Provorov, because again, if it's a similar situation of what happened with Konechny, where... You know, they, you know, where Elliot Freeman comes out and says, you know, they could have traded him. You know, they told him they could have traded him. And you do that with Provorov and you give him the opportunity to play with Ryan Ellis. Then you have, right then and there, you have Provorov and Ellis. And that could be a very good, consistent pairing for the, for most of the season. I don't know if it would have, I mean, obviously, it's a whole different story once you get to the playoffs and everything else. And obviously, we're nowhere near that right now. But you get my point. Um, I think you got to keep that together. And I think the same thing with Sanheim versus the line. And I, I think Cam York is an, is an NHL defenseman at this point. I think he's going to play here for the rest of the year. I think he will make the team out of camp next year. Um, and he will be a flyer, I think, in the starting of next season. As for the guys that, you know, if if it's like a Gossis Bear and Aubrey Kubel situation where they just, the guy just isn't used right, it, it, it's it, it's so frustrating because even this year they've used guys wrong. They did it last year as well. Old players, again, like Goss's pair, like Albie Kubel, who are gone now. Goss's pair is having one of his best years in a good amount of time. Albie Kubel has been lending it up with Colorado. I think last I checked, he had 11 points with the Avalanche. He's been there. The guys, this year, Limblom, Frost, Zamula, like, they're not using them right. I said it before with Limblom. We said it last year. He's not going to do anything. He's not going to benefit you playing on the fourth line. Morgan Frost is going to do nothing on the fourth line for you. And you're not even giving him PK time either, which is mind-boggling to me because, like, I, I mean, he's getting power play time, which I like because, again, he's so good on the power play. He's very flashy in very different areas, and you can use him in different ways there. And same with the penalty kill. I mean, he's he's one of the Phantoms' best penalty killers when he was down there, and you could still use him there, and I, I don't understand why they're not giving him the look. Again, Sealer, a guy, I just don't understand why he's playing right now. And you have Zamula down there playing in the NHL. Bring call up Zamula. Let him play. He only played one game, and you know he he should have played more. It, it, it's it, I just don't think this team should fully rebuild. Again, you have too much talent, and basically you're gonna set yourself to what three, four, maybe even five years back of where you are right now if you get rid of guys like Konechny, like Sanheim. You know, I I know there's obviously there's other guys in that area, too, that y- y- you might have to get rid of. Um, James and Reeves, like, is a guy who I don't really see being here after after this season. The Flyers are going to have to try to move him. Um, it, it, there's there's many different areas. I think, guys, you have to re-sign Zach McEwen. 100% re-sign Zach McEwen. I think he's a perfect player for the Flyers' fourth line. He could even play top nine, top six, if you wanted, with the skill set that he shows sometimes. And that's if the Flyers are injured or whatnot. But McEwen has been really good in, in, in his own right. And um, the York goal in tonight's game against the Rangers was, you know, I, again, I'm recording this after the Rangers, after I just did my game recap video. The goal that 
for on Cam York's first NHL goal. I mean, that all started off of McEwen. He won the play in the defensive zone, t- took it out. I mean, there's so many different areas where McEwen, he, he checks all the boxes for, for, for me to, to keep him. And um, he's had some really good moments, good couple good fights, some scraps. Um, and, and, and look, there are other guys as well. I mean, you have Broussard. I don't think the Flyers will re-sign him. They do have guys on IR too. Couturier, obviously. Um, Thompson, Brown, Morin, Broussard, uh, and Couturier are all the guys that are on IR. So that's the other thing you have to put in this is the injuries. And that's what's the most concerning to me is that you've had so many injuries and the medical staff, again, I'm not going to sit here and make it like I know what goes on behind the doors, what goes on with the guys in the medical room and everything like that. Cause I don't, I have, I have zero idea. I, I, I don't, I don't have a clue, but it is concerning when Couturier, Broussard, Thompson, Brown, Morin, all of these guys, and Hayes, and Ellis, and, and all that stuff is happening with the guys that are having injuries. And again, and I know Thompson's injury was a, a shoulder thing, and he got surgery, but that's different. Like, Kutz was e- like, clearly playing with an injury for a good amount of time. They openly admitted Kevin Hayes was. They clearly rushed Ellis back. Like, Broussard as well. Like, he played that one game, and now we haven't seen her really heard anything on him since. It's concerning, and when you're getting to that point, and it, it, it's it's really concerning with this team. I mean, it, it's it's not fun when you have to continuously deal with injuries, continuously deal with all this stuff. But look, I, I think there's a lot of talent to build around here. I mean, guys like Konechny, I know he hasn't scored in a while, but it, it, it's it's the confidence factor that's kind of just gone down from everything from Wendelin Vigneault and all of that stuff. It's really hurt these guys, and um. Obviously, a new coach and a new system, I think that changes everything. It, it does. It really does because it implements a lot of things. Um, you you kind of get that new identity that you've been looking for. And if you can make a modern day kind of, I don't want to say broad street bullies, but a team that's hard to play against can score, you know, cycle the puck, just do the things you can and build the team, you know, to win with the talent you have and Try to be able to do that um, going into next season. And, and a fresh start is kind of where what I'm thinking of here. And I think a guy that could do that would be Rick Tockett. I mean, think about it. It's a guy who doesn't have much experience coaching. And he's not really known for any sort of system or anything like that. He's, he's you know, he coached a couple of years in Arizona. He was assistant coach in Pittsburgh when they won a cup. And um, he, he doesn't have much experience, and, and, and I'm not saying experience in that way, but I'm saying, like, he's not known for anything like like how Tortorella is for getting, you know, getting the most out of his teams. How Bruce Boudreaux is, is known for getting teams' offense going like he did in Vancouver this year. Like, if the Flyers can bring in a guy like that, where if Taka can implement a system, if it's anything like he played, that's the modern name Broad Street Boys that I want to say. 100%. I think you, you can't give up on guys... And again, you can't bring in seven players like you did Ellis, Atkinson, Broussard, Yandel, Jones, all these guys, right? You can't do all of that. And then to say, all right, well, it doesn't work this year. Let's change it all up again. Like, what was the point of doing it the year before? You just did it, you just did it for this year then, if you, you know what I mean? So that's my thing. It, it's, you're basically setting yourself back. And I know the drafts are heavy in the coming years. I get that. But again, you have to let those guys develop. It doesn't mean those guys, and again, we don't know if the Flyers are going to be getting a top pick because, again, we all thought, right, that if they were supposed to be that bad, then they probably wouldn't have made the playoffs. Well, they ended up making the playoffs because of the, the raw talent that they had, and their picks weren't that good, and they obviously didn't draft great either. So there's so many things because, again, you're not going to hit in the draft either all the time. You know, you're obviously, you, obviously you're going to hit every once in a while. That's why the Flyers got Carter Hart and, and different things like that. But you're not going to hit all the time. So that's why I, I don't think building through the draft is anything. Because, again, you have so much talent here right now that like you can't wait two, three, four years down the line. Because that's going to make the guys who are at least somewhat younger now older. So that's where I'm at. And I, I just don't see how you can, you know, if, if you've already basically wasted Giroux's career, I don't want to waste the rest of Couturier's um the, you know, just most of Carter Hart's young years, the rest of Pro Bowl, like, I don't want to do that. And I don't want to just give up on guys because of bad seasons consistently and everything. There's so many different factors that go into it. You can't just, you can't be reactive and you can't panic. So 
that's kind of where I'm at. I I don't think the team should should just blow it up. Um, I think there's I think there's things you can band aid here, and um, I don't know, but I I know it's uh it's a very controversial topic with a lot of of everything that could be happening with this team, but um overall there's there's many different things um that can change with this team so we'll see what happens but anyway thank you guys for watching uh remember check out seat geek you can use code flyers to mania for uh 20 off your first purchase um buttons you can use code phi for 10 percent off and uh garrett group construction for any home improvement needs thank you guys for watching and i will talk to you all again soon